So your manometer. Manometer usually involves a U-shaped tube. One end of it is closed, the other end is typically open. So, and you can fill this with pretty much any fluid you want to, but originally they filled it with a very dense fluid, and what dense fluid did they fill it with? Mercury. So, and if I stick some, say, mercury in there. So, and the reason they, f they filled it with mercury for a reason, the more dense the fluid, so the, l the less difference in the height levels is going to be caused here. We'll see if you use a very low density fluid, you get a huge height difference, and you might have to make a very huge tube to make it work. So, but let's say I filled this with mercury. So, and this thing's full of mercury. Well, what's pushing down on this side? Yeah, so it's open to the atmosphere, then we'll say 1 atm. 101,325 Pascal. Well, if the levels of mercury in this tube are equal, what must be pushing down on this side? One atmosphere as well. They'd have to be totally equal. So, well, let's just pretend for a minute that instead I put this side completely evacuated. It's a perfect vacuum, zero pressure. Are the levels going to be equal? No, which side's going to be higher? Yeah. So because this side's pushing harder than this side, since this side's not pushing back at all, so then it's going to push this level down, which causes the other side to rise. And so it causes a difference in height of the two sides of the manometer. And at one atmosphere, filled with mercury, guess what that difference is? Seven hundred and sixty millimeters, or 0.76 meters. And that's where they come up with the idea that seven hundred and sixty millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere, because that's the height difference one atmosphere pressure causes in a manometer. So let's look at one more example here. So instead of that, instead of a perfect vacuum in there, let's say now that this height difference I gave you was 380 millimeters. 380 millimeters. Notice I didn't really redraw it to reflect that or anything. I'm just numenometer. H here is 380 millimeters. So first off, which side of the manometer in this case has a higher pressure? The side open to the atmosphere or the other side? Atmosphere. Yeah, atmosphere is still higher. And so in this case though, you can look at the pressure, or at least the difference in pressure between the two sides, as just equal to rho g h in this case and work it that way. So however, we can do this much easier, because I can work all this and plug and chug all this, but because this is mercury, I already know that somebody's already been nice enough to tell me that one atmosphere would be the same thing as 700 millimeters, 760 millimeters of mercury, and I don't have to do all this. If it was any other fluid, I might go through this rigmarole of the difference in pressure between both sides is equal to this lovely guy, with H being the difference in the height here in this case. But we're not even going to go there. It's mercury. Life is good. Question? In that case, the density of the density of mercury? It's density of whatever fluid you got in your manometer, yeah, which in this case would totally be mercury, which you don't have to memorize. That one will be given to you if you need it. <coughs> so in this case, though, because I know this lovely conversion, so, well, in this case, the delta P, so it's or the, the H here instead, rather, is 380 millimeters, specifically millimeters of mercury. And here, because these are the equivalent terms in millimeters of mercury and atmospheres, I can kind of just use that as a conversion factor. I'll put millimeters of mercury down here. I'll put atmospheres up here. And one atmosphere is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury. And so I can kind of express this in atmospheres if I so desire. And then I could say, oh, well, you know, one atmosphere equals 101,325 Pascal if I wanted to go to Pascal and stuff like that. Notice, if I use this equation, if the density of mercury had been provided, 
assuming you use SI units all the way across here, this would immediately already come out in Pascal. So what does this come out to in atmospheres? So what does that mean in this case? It's the difference in pressure. What does that mean? It's the pressure relative to the other side, which is the open to the atmosphere. And is this side 0.5 atmospheres higher or lower? Lower. lower. So because, again, we know the pressure is higher on this side than this side because this side's pushing down harder than this side is based on the levels that we see. And so this side's got to be 0.5 atmospheres lower than 1, which means what pressure would be on this side? 0.5 atmospheres as well. So, cool. But that's how your old school manometers worked. If you look at your old school barometers, somebody, some other smart genius from way back in the day, he took, let's say, a beaker. Don't know that it was really a beaker. And he took a tube, and he inverted this tube. Guess in what substance he did this? Nope. Yep. Also in mercury. And technically, again, you could use anything, but the original barometer also used mercury. And so in this case, if you look, the level inside this inverted tube was higher than the level outside. Well, the idea is that outside, we have one atmosphere of pressure. And inside, just like he, we did in the original manometer, we evacuate this and get a pressure of zero. Cool, so because there's more pressure pressing down on the fluid here and none pressing back, that's why this level's higher than outside the tube. And in this case, what height does it raise to? 760 millimeters. So two similar look, you know, devices that essentially are gonna accomplish the same thing. Just ways of measuring pressure using densities. Now, my question for you, along the same lines. What if I did this same experiment, set up a barometer, so, but I accidentally used good old H2O. Good old H2O. My question is, I just kind of generically drew this here, should the height go higher or lower than when I did it with mercury? So, a lot higher. How much higher? The correct answer is you don't know. <laughs> so, however, if I tell you that the density of mercury is 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed, how many, what would be the specific gravity, let me get that one, of mercury then? Awesome. 13.6. That means it's 13.6 more times dense than water. Okay. So you said you expected the water to rise higher. How much higher? 13.6 times higher. If, so mercury's got 13.6 times higher density, so water's going to have to raise 13.6 times higher height. And the idea is, is that the weight of water supported by the column would be the same as the weight of mercury supported by the column. But it's going to take 13.6 times more water to equal that same weight, since it's 13.6 times less dense. 